Hey guys, what's up? This is Brett. Welcome to this week's episode of Friday on the Turntable. Before we start, I just want to mention a few things. Uh, thank you for watching my last week's feature on Peter Murphy where I ranked his entire catalog. If you did miss that, it's down uh, further on my channel. You can check that out. Also, another quick announcement for those of you guys watching uh, record labels and other bands. If you are interested in having your music featured here or reviewed, please send me an email. You can either contact me right here on my YouTube channel or over at my blog, which there's a link down below in the description box. So this week I'm talking about Graham Parsons and his 1974 album, Grievous Angel. Before we start that discussion, I want to show five other albums that came out in 1974. Mott the Hoople, Mott. Or sorry, this one's called The Hoople. There's a red one that's called a Mott. Uh, Rush's debut album, also from 1974, this one featured John Rutsey on drums, not Neil Peart, so that was the only Rush album with him. That was their debut album. Uh, a band I just recently talked about when I uh, did a little video feature review on, <coughs> excuse me, um, their uh, movie, Nothing Can Hurt Me, the Big Star documentary, and this is their second album from 1974. This is Radio City. Outstanding. Uh, when I listened to uh, just a couple, about an hour ago, Brian Eno, his second solo album from 1974 also. Show the gatefold on this one. Uh, this has a little connection to Peter Murphy from last week's topic because his band Bauhaus did a cover of Side Two's Third Uncle, which was uh, the opening track on their Sky's Gone Out album. And number five here, one of my absolute favorite all albums of all time and my favorite David Bowie album, this is Diamond Dogs. If you're unfamiliar with Diamond Dogs, most, well, most people know the track Rebel Rebel, but the, the, the deeper cuts on this album, specifically Sweet Thing, Outstanding, We Are the Dead, 1984, Big Brother. I featured this here. I think this was my very first Friday on the Turntable video feature. And uh, what can I say about Diamond Dogs? It's, it's, it's excellent. All right. Graham Parsons, Grievous Angel. Wow. Uh, country rock music legend. Uh, cosmic American music, as he called it, combining country music elements with rock music. And uh, this was his second and final album. Uh, he passed away actually about four months before the release of this. This came out in January of 74 and he passed away of a drug overdose uh, in September of 1973. So I kind of want to give you a little recording output background of Graham Parsons before I start the discussion about this. Um, behind me here, I have a an album here that recently came out on Sundays. These were some recordings that were found um, on a reel-to-reel -reel tape, I believe, by a guy that was a friend of his back in in Graham's younger or earlier years, and uh, they were recordings that were done either in a bedroom or in a living room, and they're all acoustic demos of songs that he had written, and some of them were covers, and. It's a really cool uh, snapshot kind of in, in, into his earlier um, earlier days, kind of more fo folk oriented, but it has a great version of Buffy St. Marie's coding, as well as uh, an early version of Brass Buttons, which appears on um, a re-recorded version on Grievous Angel, which I will talk about here in a second. And then also there's a track on here called I Just Can't Take It Anymore, which Evan Danto from the Lemonheads huge Graham Parsons fan who's covered lots and lots of his songs, did a fantastic version of it on uh, 2009 Lemonhead, Lemonhead's album, Varshans, where it was all covers and there's a great version of I Just Can't Take It Anymore on that one. Um, so Graham's first professional recording debut, I guess we could say, was um, in the International Submarine Band, a band that he had formed. And they only put out one album called Safe at Home. There's a couple, a couple seven inch singles as well for this and uh, it was released on Lee, ha uh, Lee Hazelwood's uh, record label back then, and back in March of 1968. And uh, it's great because there's some quotes on here about the, the album and the band from Glenn Campbell, Dwayne Eddy, Don Everly, Lee Hazelwood um, talking the album up. So, International Submarine Band. So after, he, after that uh, project dissolved, he joined one of the biggest bands, uh, the American Beatles, I guess uh, I guess they've been called, and that was the Birds. 
And uh, wow, this album is just so excellent. If you're unfamiliar with, if all you know from, from the birds is turn, 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 Mr. Tambourine Man. This is when the birds went country. And this was also from 1968. And Graham Parsons actually co-wrote or wrote some of the songs on this album, uh, Hickory Wind and 100 Years From Now. Um, and it's just, uh, it's a great, great record. And he was, he was only on the, uh, on One Bird's album, This Is It. And he sings on the tracks, You're Still On My Mind, as well as Hickory Wind. And then I also think he sang, there's versions of him actually singing various songs from the album, but for some reason, I don't know if it was because he was still under a contract obligation with um, International Submarine Band, he couldn't be one of the dominant singers, or I don't know exactly the specifics on that. But he, uh, nonetheless, there are recordings, there's been deluxe editions of this released on CD where uh, it has a lot of the other songs that are him, uh, him singing on as well. So Sweetheart of the Rodeo, I love the artwork on this one. Just outstanding. Definitely re highly recommend picking that one up. After he left the Birds, he took Chris Hillman with him, who was the, uh, the uh, bass player in the Birds, and he formed the Blind, and those two formed uh, the Flying Burrito Brothers. This was their debut album, which came out in 1969. This is the Gilded Palace of Sin, outstanding uh, record. Blend, like we talked about earlier, blend, blend of country and rock elements. Um, had Sneaky Pete Kleino on pedal steel, just outstanding, just out there, pedal steel player, really excellent. You see them all there in their nudie suits with the two, uh, with the two girls there. And um, wow, what can I say about this album? Just some great compositions on this one, Sin City, uh, Christine's tune, Hot Burrito number two, just excellent. And then the really funny spoken word, uh, Hippie Boy, which Chris Hel Hillman does the uh, story. Uh, a vocal kind of spoken word over this background music and the backing singers are out of tune. It's just a funny little track. But uh, yeah, and Chris Etheridge was on bass. He recently passed away. But this is another one I highly recommend. This is the reissue on Four Men with Bird, Four Men with Birds, Four Men with Beards. There was one more Flying Burrito Brothers album with Graham Parsons before he departed. And that was Burrito Deluxe. And this came out, I think it was 1970. And one of the kind of interesting things about this album, while it, it, it's, it's, it's nowhere near as strong as the debut, it actually features, well, it has uh, Michael Clark, who also who played drums in The Birds, but it has the first recorded released version of Wild Horses by the Rolling Stones. Graham Parsons was friends with uh, Keith Richards, and he had heard them uh, doing a demo version of Wild Horses, and he got permission for them to, from them to record it. So they recorded it first, actually, and released it before the Rolling Stones ever did. And this is Burrito Deluxe. So it's kind of getting us into present time here, Graham's solo career. So in 1973, he released his debut album, Photograph here from the Chateau Marmont in Hollywood. And this is GP, uh, great, great first album. Uh, love the artwork on this one. And um, just a killer, killer recording. Um, and then after this, uh, oh wow, we'll sweep out the ashes in the morning, a song for you, Streets of Baltimore, still feeling blue, cry one more time, wow, just an accident, how much I've lied, really heartbreaking, just a great release, that was his debut album, after that came out, uh, the band he assembled, Grant Parsons and the Falling Angels, hit the road, and this was a live album that was released. If you guys watch my channel, you've seen me wear a Graham Parsons and the Falling Angels t-shirt, and there is the original one right there, except my colors of mine are inverted. <clears throat> Blue with the white lettering. And so this features, uh, this is good because you get a, a nice snapshot of what the live band sounded like. Very cool. So then, uh, while they were on the road, uh, they, you know, he was writing some songs, and uh, before he died, he recorded the album that now we know now know as Grievous Angel. So this was his second album. Like I said, it came out in January of '74, about four months after he passed away. And the artwork for this one is not what was originally intended. It was supposed to be him on a Harley Davidson with Emmy Lou Harris standing behind him, and uh, she was supposed to get a co-head uh, co-billing. So it was supposed to be Graham Parsons 
and Emmy Lou Harris. But as you can see, it has that picture of his head just kind of floating in this blue sea. And she was resigned to a credit on the back cover. Uh, those decisions, I've, uh, from what I've read, were made by uh, Graham's wife, who was in charge of his uh, stuff after he passed away. And um, so that's what we have. And the track listing what not what was originally intended. There were three additional songs that were recorded for this album, and they weren't included, although they were from the exact same session. So I want to show you that because they were put out uh, later. I think this came out in 1976, yeah, on AM Records. And there were three songs uh, Brand New Heartache, Sleepless Nights, and The Angels Rejoiced Last Night. And those three tracks are compiled on here, as well as a bunch of outtakes and cover songs from the Flying Burrito Brothers. This is definitely worth seeking out so you can uh, have those other three songs. So um, this album was very cool because it had a lot of uh, really well-known musicians that played on it. Specifically, it had Elvis's band, the TC Band, Taking Care of Business bands, which had um, James Burton, legendary guitar player, uh, Glenn Hardin on piano, Emery Gordy Jr. on bass, and Ronnie Tut on drums, as well as you can't deny Emmy Lou Harris's presence on this album because uh, you know some people are just meant to sing together, and the way they harmonize together, it's just like hearing the angels sing. It's it's just beautiful, and uh, you know this this album launched her career. Shortly after that, she went on to, of course, have a a uh, beautifully amazing solo career, one of the uh, best voices in country music or, or in music in general. And um, yeah, just, just outstanding. So nine songs in this album, uh, five and a half of them are original Graham Parsons songs or songs that he co-wrote now. Why they're half? Because this side two starts with a medley, what's known as the Live from Northern Quebec medley which has an A and a B section. The A section is Cash on the Barrel Head, which is a Leuven Brothers uh, song. And then Graham's Hickory Wind, which was a song that he had uh, written and recorded um, on the Bird's Sweetheart of the Rodeo. And that song is a pseudo live song because they recorded it actually in the studio and then they added crowd noise and voices to make it sound like there was this huge crowd there. And then there's all this like bric-a-brac talking and sounds of bottles breaking. And one night, uh, one of my friends and I uh, walked home from having a few cold ones and we were listening to this album uh, repeatedly. And uh, and my friend Brian noticed that there's a, if you listen really closely, there's two, there's two females arguing and one of them says, do you want to fight? You're ugly. And you hear it in there and then you hear bottles crashing and it's just really funny. And, and then before, I think it's before Hickory Wind starts, you hear uh, a male voice say, play Sin City, Graham. And that was Kim Fowley, uh, LA guy, musician, producer. He's uh, most notable for uh, forming and putting together and bringing to fame the band The Runaways with, uh, you know, of course, Joan Jett. And uh, he's featured predominantly in the movie The Runaways, which came out a couple of years ago with Kristen Stewart. And, uh, yeah, just a character. And so he's actually credited on the album as one of those voices in that track. Definitely very cool. Um, Brass Buttons, I talked about earlier how it was um, a demo on this version here. The version on here is just, just, just gorgeous. Uh, recorded also by Lemonheads. Uh, Evan Dando put that um, on an album. I think it was the one from 1990 that came out. A Thousand Dollar Wedding, another song that Evan Dando recorded. Just really heartbreaking songs about kind of a disastrous wedding. Opens up with Return of the Grievous Angel, which is just a great track, uh, you know, an excellent opener, and has the line in there, um, 20,000 roads, I went down, 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 and they all led me straight back home to you. Just, just a great poignant line. Um, what else is on here? Love Hurts. Wow, we have to stop a moment here and talk about Love Hurts. Written by a husband, a female, a male, or sorry, a husband and wife, the Bryants, who also wrote Sleepless Nights, I believe, that um, Everly Brothers recorded. And the first, uh, as far as I understand, the first artist to record Love Hurts was also the Everly Brothers, although uh, Roy Orbison was the first one to have a hit with it. And there's been many, many covers over the years of it. Uh, Nazareth in the 70s did a uh, really popular version. And then, of course, 
the beautiful version of Graham Parsons and Emmylou Harris. Just if, if you're unfamiliar with it, hit pause, you know, look up Graham Parsons' Love Hurts, and there's several different versions. There's some different live uh, record studio versions of that one. I think a radio show version. Glorious, glorious song. Just amazing. And then the album ends with In My, My Hour of Darkness, which features Linda Ronstadt. Uh, on vocal, on backing vocals, and that song has a three part, uh, three verses, and each one is about a friend of his that passed away, and uh, one of them was Clarence White, who was a fellow musician, and he had died. I think it was he was it was after a gig, and him and his brother were loading equipment into the car, and uh, someone drove by, and hit I think it was a drunk driver and hit him as he was loading equipment and he passed away just a sad song so that song is a tribute to as well as a couple other friends of his just a great closing track um, I've actually performed that song at some of my acoustic shows and as well as brass buttons and they're just uh, just great tracks um, let me see if there's anything here I wanted to touch on about the album no I want to move on and show you a couple other things here so uh, these albums, Grievous Angel, GP, the two Burrito Brothers albums that I showed have all been reissued on vinyl, so they're all easily attainable for probably under $15 new. But if you don't uh, go the vinyl route, for those of you, obviously it's available digital. I have a CD copy that has GP and Grievous Angel both on one, uh, one compact disc here. Definitely worth seeking out for uh, that. And a couple other books if you're interested in finding out some more information. This first one is called Hot Burritos. This is on Jawbone Press. Uh, they sent me this a, a couple years ago and to review on my blog. And um, just a great glimpse into just that point in Graham Parsons' career. And uh, yeah, look how thick that is. Just a really well put together. Jawbone Press has put out uh, books on Bowie as well as uh, Big Star. And I think they did a book on Depeche Mode. So. Yeah, definitely worth seeking that one out. I'll have some links uh, in the description box. And then um, I read a few books on Graham Parsons, and this one here is a really uh, what I thought was a really special one. This is 20,000 Roads by David Meyer and The Ballad of Graham Parsons and His Cosmic American Music. This takes us through his childhood and uh, his family history, which there's some, uh, some definite tragedy in there, as well as his whole musical career, his death, and then the whole drama surrounding uh, his when his body was stolen uh, by by his friend Phil Kaufman, which is a movie based on, which was not a very good movie, but just I mean, you know, the drama that surrounds that and uh, Graham Parsons' uh, legacy died at the age of 26. So I think I'm going to wrap it up right there, guys. Grievous Angel, highly recommended. Uh, out of the two solo albums, I always turn to this one as my favorite one. But like I said. You know, his birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. If I, if I recommend it right now, go out and grab three Graham Parsons related albums. I would say grab Grievous Angel. I would get Sweetheart of the Rodeo. I'm just going to do one quick more showing. Sweetheart of the Rodeo. And then also The Gilded Palace of Sin. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Thanks for subscribing. Looking forward to your comments. Take care.